also Sorry. joined by the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, to get to her thoughts on the budget yesterday. Good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Now, listen, you were drafted in at short notice, weren't you, after Sakia Starmer tested positive. So uh, just how much notice did you get on that one? I got 45 minutes notice that I would be responding to the budget. So um, not much time, but my background is working as an economist. So I put that to very good use yesterday and uh, used those 45 minutes uh, well, I hope, in, uh, in unpicking the budget that was to come. Not long at all. How is Sakia Starmer? I know that you, know, you, you were sort of pictured only a few hours earlier, sat right next to him with no masks, weren't, they, weren't you? Uh, are you? Are you worried as well for how you might be? Well, I, I have had COVID and obviously been double jabbed. I did a COVID test um, as well to make sure that that I'm OK. And I spoke to Kia yesterday afternoon and uh, and he seemed in, in good spirits, obviously disappointed not to have had that chance to respond to the budget yesterday. But uh, hopefully I was a, a decent stand in. Well, some people have said overnight that you were very good and potentially could be the next leader of the Labour Party. Uh, should Keir Starmer be looking over his shoulder and really regretting testing positive in the last couple of days? Well, I'm sure he's regretting testing positive. And as someone who's had COVID, um, I don't, uh, I don't uh, envy what he'll be going through over the next sort of um, uh, seven days or so. Um, but uh, look, I want to be Chancellor of the Exchequer, and I think you probably saw that in the response uh, yesterday. That's my ideal job. If you took the shadow away from the front of my job title, that's the job yeah. that I want to have. Well, you wouldn't want to be leader of the Labour Party, would you? Because you've got n absolutely no chance of getting in. I mean, Conservatives are pretty much the analogy I heard yesterday, which was like superb, is that the Conservatives have cross dressed themselves into Labour. I mean, they've taken all your policies away from you, haven't they? Um, I, I don't, uh, I don't recognise that description. If this had been a Labour budget yesterday, if I had been delivering the budget rather than responding to it, I would have been focusing on the cost of living crisis, on the fact that our tax system has become grossly unfair. Where, as you said, bankers got a tax cut yesterday, and ordinary working people got a tax increase, both national insurance and hidden in the budget documents, a council tax rise as well. But also, a Labour budget yesterday would have had a plan for growth in it. Because the truth is, at the end of all these measures that were announced yesterday, the Office for Budget Responsibility says that the economy, by the end of this parliament, is only likely to be growing at 1.3% a year. That is less than what we've seen in the last 10 years, and much less than we saw in the 10 years before that. And the problem with low growth is that to fund the public services that you want, you have to tax much more. And unless we get that growth, you can't sustainably increase living standards and invest in our public services. And that's why we need to do much more to grow the economy, create those good quality jobs. It's why I'm so passionate about investing in a zero carbon economy, because that can create exceptional jobs, well paid, high productivity, high skill in all parts of the country but also plans that I've set out okay. previously to buy, make and sell more in Britain so we're keeping more money and more what, jobs on our shores. What, one of the things that you've talked about is removing, cutting entirely business rates, business, uh, business taxes, essentially, for high street retailers. How are you going to fund that? That's going to, be, that's going to cost billions. I think I heard, heard two, a figure £25 things. billion pounds that could cost the economy. Where's that going to come from? Two things. We've said that next year we would increase the digital services tax paid by some of the online giants uh, to fund a reduction in business rates for everybody else. But as the British Chamber of Commerce said yesterday, the system that, of business taxation that we've got today is not fit for a modern economy. So we would reform business rates entirely and replace them with a new form of business property taxation. And that new form of business property taxation, whilst raising money still, would ease the burden on small businesses and high street uh, businesses, but ask those online giants, companies that are making huge profits, to pay more in tax. This is about levelling the playing field some, and ensuring say, that you, small businesses you, and high streets have a chance to thrive. Some would say if you tax some of these online giants, I mean, so many of us use the likes of Amazon now, and you, you do it sort of inadvertently without realising something. It's, they're, they're just such a huge corporate, corporation, corporation. We've interviewed people from Amazon on this show before, and their argument is that we do pay some tax, but more importantly, we contribute to the economy and we supply lots of jobs. Now, if you were to 
raise their taxes, A, they might raise their prices, or they might just not be here. They might go somewhere else, and that would be worse, wouldn't it, for the country? At the moment, we've got a system where you've got a high street business that is paying business rates. If it's making enough money, it'll be paying corporation tax. And their main competitor might be an online giant who pays less business taxation because warehouses are not taxed like high street shops. But they're not likely to be registered in this country for corporation tax either. So they're not paying corporation tax in this country on their profits. That is not a level playing field. That is a system that is skewed against our high streets and our town centres. And Labour wants to transform that system so that those online giants pay their fair share of taxes. They make huge profits, but they pay very little in to the tax system, whereas we ask our high street firms to pay so much in. So I want to level that playing field. That's what business organisations are calling for as well, a more level playing field, a fairer system of business taxation. OK, something else you'd call for was a cut on VAT, on energy bills. The Treasury sources that would dismiss this saying it was poorly targeted and would actually subsidise well-off households and, and wouldn't help those people that really needed it. Well, people are facing a tough winter with the prices of everything increasing, filling up your car with petrol, your weekly food shop and your gas and electricity uh, bills. And Labour believes that... Uh, we need to do a bit more to help people get through these winter months. And the truth is those people on more modest and lower incomes pay a higher proportion of their household budgets on their gas and electricity um, bills. And a cut in VAT would be immediate and automatic. Over the last few months, because prices have been so high, VAT receipts have come in higher than the Office of Budget Responsibility and the Treasury expected. I think that some of that money should be used to reduce the VAT on gas and electricity bills. And, you know, the Prime Minister called for this in 2016. He said one of the benefits of leaving the European Union would be that we could cut VAT on domestic gas and electricity bills. Well, we're out of the European Union now. We have those freedoms. We should use them to cut gas and electricity bills because people are struggling with this winter. Everybody is seeing those rising costs. It costs a billion pounds. That's just a fraction of the extra VAT receipts that have come in this last month. And that would be how Labour would help people with the cost of living crisis this winter. That's a better approach than cutting taxes for bankers and cutting okay. taxes on domestic flights. All right. Uh, Rachel Reeves, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you very much uh, for joining us this morning.